yesterday, Sunday, the 21st of March, was World Poetry Day. All this week, we are celebrating World Poetry Day here at Motivate Me and trying to catch up with as many of the different people that we work with who are involved in poetry. One of those people is Luke Darnell, who is joining me today. So, Luke, please just tell me a little bit about who you are and where you are joining me from. Well, hello. Um, uh, my, as, I, as you mentioned, my name's Luke Durnell. I'm, and at the moment, I'm uh, in the Caveog Valley in North Wales, and um, and I've been writing poetry for oh, a good, good ten years or so. Um, but it sort of kicked off in the last good, for, oh, good three, I'd say. So, yeah. <laughs> Tell me then about your journey into poetry. How did it all begin for you? Well, I've always been quite a creative. I've got a creative mind. Um, uh, I I suppose really it didn't start until I did English A level, and that must have been around 2013, 2014. Um, and so uh sort of since and then i just thought i just thought give it a go and see what what happens um and uh, i found that i actually enjoyed it and just carried on carried on writing are there any particular sort of topics that you particularly enjoy writing um do you have any sort of area that you specialize in or is it very much what comes here of the moment uh it's a lot of what comes at the moment, uh, in the moment rather, um, uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of nature poetry I, I started with, but it, at the moment it's got much more into deeper emotions and questions and sort of, and just try and branch out as much as I can really, um, uh, and just try and try and sort of push the poet or, or push myself into different areas of poetry and different themes. And do you think the events of the last 12 months, even more than that now really, have they had any kind of effect on the direction your poetry has taken? Uh, I think definitely. I think, as I said, you know, I think there's been much more sort of um, poetry that's been linked to emotions and questions and um sort of where where we all want to be as well um and as i as as i've been talking talking to you sort of you know we we are moving house and also sort of fresh starts and all that sort of come into play as well so um but i think definitely the lockdowns had an effect i found it quite difficult to write at the beginning of it uh, I think because you, with someone who's creative, you're expected to go out and sort of live live life and find inspiration from that. Uh, and I think because of that lack of insp inspiration in terms of general day-to-day -day life, I think you have to sort of, uh, I think you start looking in yourself a lot more. And I think... Um, also, I find I also I've been walking quite a lot, uh, which I didn't, which I've never sort of walked so much before. Um, but that's, you know, I, I recently I've been um, looking much more around where I live and and the inspirations of the hills and and really just sort of writing down what I wouldn't normally write down, which is sort of the day-to-day -day things I, I do. So, so yeah, I think it's, uh, there's been a lots of aspects of it that have changed, uh, have changed recently in, in the last, well, certainly in the last 12 months. Do you think poetry is something that's helped you over the last 12 months? Oh, definitely. Um, I think it's, it's good to concentrate on something that, you can sort of uh, let go really and just sort of 
live in a creative environment and get your imagination going and think, oh, well, this connects to this and sort of, well, we could uh, do something with this and just to really just change. Um, uh, because it really almost allows you to ch change perspective in a sense, doesn't it? In a, yes, in a situation yeah. where it's actually been been so hard to get any fresh perspective, hasn't it? Really, in many ways. So, yes. Um, yeah. So I think it's sort of just letting go and just concentrating on something which, you know, um, where there is very, very little to concentrate or distract you from just sitting in a chair doing nothing. And but yeah, I've, I've I found that I've enjoyed it more perhaps because i've been able to sort of concentrate on it more mm -hmm. i suppose one, one thing we have gained from the last 12 months is, is an opportunity to focus on on different things isn't it then that matter to us and i, I suppose that's good um do, do you think that poetry has helped you in terms of your personal strength in terms of actually getting through this time with all the challenges that you know we, we've all gone through has it helped you in that respect um yes i i think so um uh, i think it's uh i think it also depends on sort of what poetry you're wanting to write um i think you know there's i mean i think poetry can sort of be um uh over of course there's, there's poetry that's comfort and there's poetry that's difficult and harsh and we can be and can be quite bleak um and sometimes it's quite good to write the bleak poetry because that gets it out of your system um and so i think it's uh so it's quite good to sort of sort of have a balance i think mm -hmm. um and uh and just sort of move, um, get things off your chest, I think. And mm -hmm. I think that's quite good. If so, you know, especially, you know, in, in these times, you know, there's been lots of frustrating aspects of this as well as there's been good, good things as well, but there have been frustrating parts of lockdown and the whole COVID. Um, but I think, it's quite good to put those put those frustrating elements in a poem and also question things um and sometimes you know that can open doors into new poetry which it has for me because i, I think my poetry has always been quite safe a lot of the time mm -hmm. and i think it's been a good exercise into opening a new door do you have any sort of process you follow with your poetry or is it very much um, uh, no. just let it come? Do you, do you have any way of, you know, working that's your own way? Um, some can come easier than others. Some I can just write down and it's, you know, I'm happy with it. Some I need to take a lot longer to process and to get I, in that way. I just put ideas down in in a list um and some some come to nothing and some <laughs> and some uh, some get there um uh but i think uh, one of one of the things that i need one of the things i do need to learn i think is to sort of almost slow down and and read it back to myself which i'm not not very good at doing which which is not very good um but um certainly it's um you know some come in a flash and it's there in front of me and some do need to take a bit longer <laughs> mm -hmm. okay good and obviously we are currently working on a book of poetry together which will be your first published volume of poetry which hopefully will come out later this year. That's something I'm really looking forward to. Um, you've also been involved in various um, spoken word events, haven't you, in the past? I've attended some of those with you. Um, yes. Do you like performing poetry then? <laughs> um, well, if we go 
back to when we when I first started, um, I was very apprehensive about um, read reading. Um, I mean, it's not that I was. I think reading poetry is different to reading anything else, and I'm all right if I'm reading. Uh, someone else's work and you know I I read in church and that sort of thing um, but reading my own poetry I found that quite a big step and I think it's because uh, it, because it's something you've written and because it's poetry and I think poetry is sort of almost more personal than anything else you can write I don't know why that is but for me it's I think poetry is sort of uh the ultimate of sort of bearing your soul in mm -hmm. in, a, in some form but I think I found it very difficult to begin with but I'm sort of learned to sort of get over that by just doing it again and again and just going to as many um, spoken word events and just try just sort of grin and bear it but I've, I've actually found it quite you know it is a useful exercise and it, it, it does help the more you do it so um, but yeah at the beginning I wasn't uh, <laughs> I wasn't very good but um, but I I think it's just you just got to keep doing it as much as you can um uh and you know and poetry is to be shared so you think well why have I, why is it just why have i just got it kept in my book when i can actually read it and of course reading poetry it's should that's how it should be um how it should be really there's a certain magic isn't there in poetry when you can bring it alive take it from the page and then bring it to the microphone and bring it out into the world with, with your own yes you know take on it i think that's something i particularly like in poetry yeah and sometimes you think why did i <laughs> why did i put that down that doesn't sound right at all which is also why why i think <laughs> why you should um uh read it beforehand <laughs> there is that but, at the same yeah. time i don't believe that poetry should be sort of clinical it shouldn't be a sterile form should it that's avoid no I, I that's true as well i think i think there's got to be a balance um uh, because i think if it gets too too worked upon the magic which you've had at the beginning has has gone and it's become all a bit too um or too clinical and obviously, you know, your your current location where you are is um, not without its own history of poetry, is it? <laughs> well, no. Uh, well, to be honest, I've only sort of um, remembered these names from a, um, recently. Um, but uh, John Cavio Hughes was born in Clanarman uh Flanarman, dc which is um about half an hour up the road really uh and he he's the one who wrote um uh Arhi de norse uh, all through the night and i think he was one of uh he wrote uh men of harla uh so some really uh big big songs uh you know songs which we all um which we've all grown up on and have heard uh across you know they were across wales and uh, across the world um so i sort of and it's sort of not that well well it's well known in the valley but it's sort of and i just I, it just sort of dawned on me I, I only in the last few months, I thought, well, you know, there are there have been these poets, and it and the valley has been known as the uh, as the valley of the poets, um, and I think there's been a few. Uh, I think Robert Ellis Kimbellu, um, uh, I think there's a poet goes back to the War of the Roses, and I believe that one was the first one who. Um, 
uh, reported that Richard III had been killed. So there's there's lots of important aspects of the ballet in terms of poetry and writers. Um, and it just so happen, happens that sort of there's another there's another poet in the valley after all these years. And it's great to see a tradition continued. Um, and, and again, there's a little project we, we've got in mind around that, which we'll obviously mm. look at later in the year as situations permit that to happen. Are there any particular poets that have been very, sort of influential to you? Anybody that you've looked up to as, a, as an influence or an inspiration for your own work? Um, yeah. Well, to be honest, yes and no. Uh, I'm at the moment. It's, I suppose poetry has been quite a recent interest for me. Um, it's. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I think first really is that I love TV and film, and there's certain aspects of that I think are poetic. You know, it's and I, I did film and TV. Um, uh, at college and then I've done film at uni and I think there are aspects of that that are poetic and uh, you know looking at um, a film and seeing different meanings and why someone would wear blue or whatever uh, I, and so I think that's where it's all started from there I think but then I've sort of looked at poetry more and I think uh, T.S. Eliot um, uh, and of course Cats uh, the musical so <laughs> um, and uh, John Betjeman um, uh, but recent, also recently I've uh, bought a book on Florence and the Machine and in there there's all her lyrics and I find uh, her music very good um, and I, I think I think that's that's it but I'm all, always sort of discovering new poets and um, uh, also Tennyson mm. uh, so so there's a sort of a good few there but I, I at the moment I'm sort of almost at the sort of um, begin. I always feel that I'm at the beginning of it and I'm always sort of trying to discover new new poetry. Um, but also, I, I've, every time uh, there's a poem in a film, uh, I sort of, uh, I, I'm immediately onto the internet and thinking, where's that from? Uh, so, yeah. Brilliant. That's great stuff. And just one sort of last thing as we wrap up, <coughs> excuse me. Is there any advice you'd give to somebody else who sort of wanted to start exploring poetry? Um, I'd just say give it a go. Um, I mean, that's what I did. Um, I, I think well, what I did was that I heard people wrote their own and I thought, oh, um, I didn't really know what to make of it. So I just thought, well, you know, these people are having a go, so why can't I? So... And it was just literally a pen to paper. And I think when you you write something you enjoy as well, or you know you want to enjoy, and don't make it difficult. Um, and if it, I say also I say start with a rhyme. Uh, start with rhyming poetry, um, and then. When you're at a stage where you think, well, I've got this one under my belt, move on to something else. And I think that's what I found is just having a go. Um, uh, and yeah, write what you enjoy. Mm -hmm. so write what you enjoy, look at others, keep learning and just keep, keep developing your skills then, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Luke, thank you ever so much for joining me today and being part of our celebrations for World Poetry Day. And I look forward to seeing more of your work in the very near future. Oh, thank you very much. It's been great.